So you definitely should need three forms of data this year. You need to know who your customer is and what do they do. You need to know how they behave and what do they need. And lastly, you should put your product to it. So what does your product solve and what does it feature? Welcome to this episode of the Redefine Growth Podcast. We're talking about e-commerce growth today, the three forms of data, the things you need to do to get more insights on your customers and some acquisition strategies that we use at Sprint and Sneakers. Stay tuned. Alrighty, Alrighty. the Redefine Growth Podcast. Today, uh, we have a, a super special guest. I cool. normally say a very special guest, but a super special guest and um one of the best e-com uh, uh, players in the Netherlands, uh, responsible for more than um, 50 uh, clients at uh, Sprints and Sneakers. Um, for sure, the most enthusiastic e-com guy that I know. Uh, and I think everybody agrees uh, me saying that. So uh, welcome, Jeroen uh, Mulder, to the show. Thank you. Very excited to have you here. We're going to talk about e-com today. We don't have an agenda. Uh, but uh, we uh, don't really need that but uh, because we both love e-com. We both love company growth uh, uh, in all these ways. So um, let's kick off. Uh, what do you love most about e-com and what you do? So what I love most about e-commerce is really fast, uh, fast-paced. Um, and it's not all about I build a product and I hope it sells, but it really goes about what does my audience want and what does, what's their behavior and what do they need in a day-to-day life? Now can I bring a smile on my customer's face and... And I really hope in 2024, uh, e-commerce parties will move more towards how can I bring a smile on my customer's face instead of how can I sell the most. And I'd love to be a part of that. Mm, interesting. Yeah, and, and you said it's it's more customer-centric and not, not really from your own product promotion. I think a lot of e-commerce uh, companies are really focused on, we have this product and mm-hmm. uh, this is how we're going to promote it. But what you're saying uh, is uh, look at your target audience, uh, your customer, uh, how can you make them happy and change their life maybe yeah. and 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 start from there so can we elaborate a little bit more on that so how how, how do you do that in your strategy and your positioning as an e-com business mm-hmm. because uh well normally you're you have a product you want to sell it uh, as many times as possible so okay yeah let's have a look at that yeah and i think that works a lot of times right so um when covid happened a lot of drop shippers came in and they uh, they exported products from china or from whatever and they build a website and they promoted the product and I think that works until a couple of 100,000 euros a year, right? You find an audience, the innovators or early adapters, and they, they like the product and uh, it's cheap maybe, and uh, they sell it, they buy it, which is good. It gets you your initial growth. But if you really want to stand out in the market uh, and instead of, of uh, in comparison to your competition, then I think it's very important that you need to listen to your customer and you need to be customer centric, knowing what they want, what they need. Um, what features they want of your product because the competition has um, has become way bigger, right? Uh, every product, every supplement, you have 10 different other options. So how are you going to stand out in Google Shopping? They, you see all the same products. People look at price. Um, these people are ready to buy. Um, we want that an experiment, right? With they want an the, the... experiment, yeah. And I think... When a new product comes, you kind of like a blue ocean, um, then it's easy. You pump in TikTok or Meta ads. You can gain some awareness and people think, oh, this is a nice product. Within a couple of months, there are 10 different other p- parties that sell the same product. Probably the big giants already think like, hey, that's a fun product. I'm going to implement that as well in my strategy. Mm. Uh, and then you have to compete. And then how do you stand out? Do you have better servers? Nah, because you're drop shipping or you're product focused. Do you have a better product? Well, maybe, but how do you show? Uh, and are you a cost leader, right? No, I'm not because there's bigger parties that have way uh, better margins so they can uh, can discount more. And then it's about how you stand out. And if you don't listen to your customer, what they want, what they need, then what's your added value? Because in the end of the day, as also at an e-commerce um, um, party, you need to have added value. Do you like this episode of the Redefine Growth Podcast? Please like and subscribe. There's more to come. Uh, I was talking with someone yesterday uh, and he was uh, planning to promote a book. And uh, what you typically see there is, uh, I think similar to what you're saying, is uh, if you want to compete with the the bulls and the Amazons, they do shipping same-day delivery uh, for free. Uh, they can uh, push more budget because the lifetime value is higher. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they have... Uh, they can they can op- offer it cheaper probably well there's some regulation with books obviously but yeah. but 
a cheap uh, delivery and all that stuff. So they have the opportunity to sell other products. So if you're going to plan to sell your book yourself, then it's it's really hard to compete with this platform, especially while they're coming more and more platforms. It's not only Amazon and Ball, but yeah. it's just for Blocker, Decathlon, it's all these companies moving platform. And uh, most of them probably have more power uh, Way more. Uh, in terms of budget uh, than, than small companies do. So yeah. what can we give as an advice to um, zero to one or five million e-com companies to be able to compete with mm -hmm. these big giants? Well, I think um, uh, probably every marketeer knows Tracy and Wiersma, right? So you have uh, the best product, the best price, or the best service. And what you saw before is that you needed one of the, out of three in order to excel. What you see today is service is always important. So that's not a factor anymore. You need service and the best product. You need service and the best price. And specifically for books, it's very interesting because you got Bruna and Bol.com, they're transactional shops. Bol has a lot of different niches and they are very good in selling the transactional sell and the service part because you can have a same day delivery. I order a book and it uh, comes in tonight, but I are going, I'm going to read it next week. So why do I need it? Mm. There's no reason why I need it tonight, mm. but it's nice to have, right? Yeah. The dopamine kick that I order a product and it's home tonight. So that gives me enthusiasm, like, yeah, nice. I don't even need it. Um, so you need service as a base, always, which has is something to lead towards customer-centric. So and then you need a product or price. So let's zoom in on the service part a little yeah. bit, because... Um, I used to give an example in the past. So, uh, for example, I buy a vacuum cleaner. It's not a Dyson, so I need bags for it. So, mm -hmm. for example, I buy a vacuum cleaner. Then, um, probably as an e-com shop selling vacuum cleaners, you you know that after six months, uh, that person probably needs new bags. Mm -hmm. Or like 12 months. I don't know. I don't use it that often. But <laughs> um, you should buy a robot, maybe. Um, so... It, is this also the kind of service, at least that I see, is that really understand your... Because in terms of shipping or or uh, budget or price, uh, it's really hard to compete. So mm -hmm. I believe that, that that you should be looking at different opportunities yeah. to to serve customers in a, in a better way. Do you have other examples of that service that you're talking about? Yeah, I think you got a good point in here because I just said about uh, bringing a smile on your customer's face, right? And there's nothing less annoying than you vacuumed your whole house and then you found out that you, the bag was full and you have to do it again, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you then know, listen to your customers, how many times do you vacuum? How And after how many vacuum sessions is your bag full, then I'm going to offer... Uh, of course, new vacuum bags via email, via subscriptions, create your higher AOV, create a higher lifetime value. So this is a part I think is very logic where customer service comes in. Um, I think for books, for instance, it's um, if you cannot compete on price because there's a low book price. Yeah. If you um, cannot really compete on product because everyone sells the same books, yeah. they need to do something else and that's mm. listen to your customer. What are you reading? Why are you reading these books? After which book... Um, how how did you like this book? And uh, the same people that read the book and reviewed it the same way also read the other book. So are you interested in reading those as well? Create yeah. a community around it. And that's actually adding value too. Mm. If you know how, how many pages a person reads in a day, then you can, after a sale of 400 pages, you know exactly after how many days, probably they finish their book, send them a WhatsApp message. Hey, yeah. did you like the book? And that is like... Um, for me, the most important part, because you're interacting with your customer, you're listening to the customer, you're listening to what they need, how they behave, uh, how your product behaves in compared to other products, and then you can actually add value. Mm -hmm. And this is an example for books, but you can draw this example in many different niches and branches. Yeah, and uh, what I what I would think of right now is uh, wh what I would see as an opportunity for, for example, the books is also I think a little bit outside of the box. So you, you got that platform Goodreads yep. where you can see, oh, these are the favorite books of Brad Pitt or Elon Musk or your friends and mm -hmm. you can keep track of the books that you read. So why not either scrape that data or use it or uh, let people log in with, with their account so you, you know yep. really well what they're interested in, how they rate certain books so you can really personalize and advise and saying like, hey, you know, you're a big fan of, of Elon Musk. So d did you know that he read this book uh, last year, you know? So exactly. that's a suggestion for you. And it's, I think you're moving way uh, uh, away from that transaction that you were talking yes. about, uh, only selling a book that uh, all other companies are selling as well, and moving towards uh, a platform providing value in a whole different way. Mm -hmm. So um, I love that part of the service. And yeah. And 
this year, right? Everyone's talking about this is the year that data becomes the most important thing. And I feel like everyone is focused on the numbers, right? Mm. Data should be a one or a two or a row is five or a CPA or whatever. I think the first step is data is information and information is everything, right? What do your customers want is also data. Mm. How do your customers like your services also data. Mm. So I think people should really be focused. Yeah, service side tracking is important first, but data this year is important. But do you know your client? Mm. I This morning when I was, uh, uh, I was, I was showering and I thought like, a lot of e-com players behave like store uh, salesmen, like you have, you're working in a shoe store. Mm. And right now, imagine that as an e-com player, you're the salesman in the shoe store and you see someone coming in and the moment they come in, you block your eyes. So you mm. don't see the person coming in. So maybe the person wears Puma sneakers, Puma shirts, Puma sweater, mm. but because you don't see the person, you have no idea what to sell them or mm. how to add value. You're going to show them all the shoes, but probably yeah. that guy wants Puma shoes, right? Yeah. And in e-com, the same thing happens. People don't know who they come on their website, don't know how they behave, don't know what they like, what they bought before, what kind of communities they join in, how to find them. And in a uh, vast changing environment where data becomes more important, but also scarce, because people, especially the small companies, don't know where to get the data from, how to store it, and how to use it. But people online need to learn to behave like offline. Behave like, I, I can see you, I can read you. Are you an enthusiastic person or not? And how should I approach you? Because I hate it when I come into a store uh, and right away a salesperson approached me, how can I help you? Yeah. It's the same as a pop-up. Hey, here, yeah. buy 10% discount. I don't want that yet. I want an experiment and I want to get inspired and see the products I want to see. I, I so, love how you compare those two. And, and what would your advice be to understand the the, the people better that, that come into your store, right? mm -hmm. either online or offline? Uh, someone is entering your store and yeah. uh, it's either the person that is really looking for help, you can see it in her, his or her eyes, um, or it's the person that rather rather have a look and is not willing to buy. Yeah, so how can you manage that online? Well, first step is talk to your customer. At Sprints and Sneakers, we make sure uh, our partners um, call their uh, clients every week. Mm. So we cannot do marketing if we don't know what happens in the life of our customers. Why did they buy? Why did they stop buying? What do they love about the product? What do they hate about the product? Uh, what do they think about the price, etc.? So I think that's the first step. Get in touch with your customers because you're building a product. And do you think the salespeople in the, in the store only uh, look at them and trying to sell a shoe. Now they're asking how their day was. They ask how, what your what your what your size is, what kind of shoes you love, what kind of brands you love. And from that perspective, they're offering you a product, mm. which doesn't happen online. So it, and that is becoming more. Uh, it's becoming harder, of course, because you need to build a platform that's uh, capable of doing so, mm -hmm. which probably only the giants have enough money for to uh, to do, and also the data for. But I think as a small medium enterprise or small medium medium small medium company, you can start today talking to your customers and ask what they need and what they buy and how they buy. Uh, put in focus groups of uh, of your ten most loyal customers. If you're going to release a new product, please invite the top 100 uh, customers that have been with you for the last five years. Give them a free uh, example. Give them two because they can give it to a friend or another friend as well. Mm and make them ambassador of your brand, interact with them, because then you will find out what they want, what they need. And then you become a less product-centric company and a more customer-centric company. Yeah. I recently heard that a lot of the younger people are really scared of calling even their doctor. So yeah, <laughs> I yeah. hope to get over it and uh, <laughs> definitely but yeah, what, start, start calling. Yeah. Yeah. And I think another option would be, if they're really scared, is uh, you now got WhatsApp channels yeah. and uh, also I'm... I'm uh, I have a subscription on certain Instagram accounts, yeah, which, Instagram which are, threads, right? yeah, yeah. are also alternatives for for a newsletter, uh, where it's a more direct channel. If you're in contact with via WhatsApp and you're just actually chatting with, uh, it's a has a way better open rate than than email, yeah. obviously, and it's a directer contact. Uh, they might be willing to help you out there as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, also one thing that everyone can do today is everyone has chat function on the website and a lot of companies that don't have a customer service really mm. uh, set up then they probably have AI or a standard chatbot tooling mm. for 30 euros a month put it on and hopefully it works which doesn't because 76% of the people according to research um, hate it if, um, if, you, if personalization went wrong they actually consider quitting your brand mm. right so personalization if you do it do it right 
uh, and especially within chat. I mean, there's so much value in interacting with your customer. You don't need to call them. You have a chat function. Mm. We present. Plankton, yeah. one of our partners, does it very well. They have two people, for uh, I think, on chats. Uh, and they get a 4.8, 4.9 on Trustpilot, and everyone says they love their service because they interact with their mm. uh, audience. They ask questions on socials about what they, what should they do, what shouldn't they do. They actually send an email to their base asking, um, s- saying they're going to advertise less because uh, the frequency is quite high. We're pushing, which is good because it works. Mm. Other hand, they don't want to become a pushy brand. So they're actually interacting with their base saying, hey, we hear you. Mm. Right, and I think that's something very beautiful, and I think that makes sure people love your brand, will stick to your brand. Loyalty will become more and more important because advertising becomes more and more expensive, right? Yeah. So you need to have a, a a higher loyalty of your customers. So I think there's a lot of value in that, and what everyone can do: start chatting to your customer, um, make sure you save all the answers, save all the questions, put in all the questions you got from your chats into the FAQ. Make an uh, AI bot on your website um, answering the most common questions because that will save you time. And then rank the questions and rank the answers, rank the concerns because, and use that information to build your business. Yeah, and also be aware of the of the moment when you launch a certain bot because for me personally, I hate these chats. Like the, yeah. the, the nine out of 10 don't, doesn't work for me, mm-hmm. right? So uh, I'm, I'm also a guy that I'm a bit more old school, I think, where I just grab my phone and yeah. just rather I, I look at... <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should do sales. <laughs> Everybody's in sales. Should be a always. course, should be, should be course on, the, on the middle school sales course, then everyone loves yeah, calling. Yeah, I'm not afraid to call at no. least, so uh, I'm older generation. But uh, yeah, I'll just like to pick up the phone and, and ask questions via phone. But uh, yeah, maybe other, for, for others is different. But same as you're saying, uh, entering a store, for me, it's uh, I'd rather just look around and do my own thing. And, and if I, I just ask for help, uh, but the chat for me in, in many times. And and. Also look at the, the data over there, like uh, do people actually use it and, and when do you launch it and, and, and don't put it in front of your face if you're not willing for it. Especially also with the cookie pop-up, and st- uh, please test it also for mobile because mm-hmm. so often it happens that you go to a website and then that the chat, that annoying chat pops up and you, you can hardly uh, get rid of it. And then there's also the cookie or yeah. the cookie is uh, you cannot see the cookie so you don't launch your tracking yep. because it's somewhere on the bottom of the page. So uh, I have it in front of the face, but easy to get rid of. Um, that would my, my advice be in terms of the tracking yeah. and data. And, uh, yeah, and also test it, right? I mean, there's uh, you can you can choose where the chat pop up or the cookie pop up, or you, now you also got Nudgeify and you got Nudges, like these amount of people bought your product and mm. these many people are looking for your product. That's also in the left bottom corner. So we got all like pop ups here and there. Just test it and make sure it doesn't influence your conversion rate too much because people get tired of it, but mm. we cannot remove cookies, right? We no. need cookies, we need the pop up. Just yeah. be smart about it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I would love this episode also to be uh, a bit more hands-on. And mm-hmm. I know, yeah, well, you've been uh, working on on so many clients and have, have done so many uh, successful experiments. Um, so I, I would love the listener to to grab that information mm-hmm. and pick your brain on in terms of uh, having some insights on, on what we should do. And uh, we always look at uh, the, the funnel and, and the journey, right? So yep. let's maybe use that as a... Um, maybe use that as a framework to to talk about some of the tactics and strategies that we use at at, uh, at, the, at our partners. Um, so starting from the acquisition part, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, starting your awareness as a brand and 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 finding new new customers. What is what are some of the successful cases that you've been working on, and what is the trend that you see in terms of uh, getting your brand out there, top of funnel. That's uh, that's uh, that's uh, for me the the toughest one, which is weird because uh, my background is really in performance, um, because uh, everyone becomes more more expensive, right? So um, uh, the the cost per clicks on every channel is 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 increasing, increasing, increasing. The competition is increasing. The amount of ads you see in Instagram, right? If you if you swipe on the stories, then first it was one at every five or six ads, and now it's seven, eight, or nine uh, stories. So it's very hard to 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 stand out, which is exactly the sh- thing you should do. Mm. You should stand out. But how do you stand out? Um, because you can have a very big explanation point, and then people, oh wait, that's that's weird. That's out of setting. It's the contrast between all the other stories and mm. what you see in that. It stands out. Then you got the people their attention. 
also, so standing out is a very important part. We call that a thumb, a thumb stopping rate, the percentage of people that stop scrolling with their thumb. Mm. Then you found a, uh, um, a good ad to, to draw attention. The secondly, it's uh, identification. People should identify themselves with what you do. So uh, you can ask a question, do you, uh, do you have or do you understand or do you see yourself as dot, 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 can help creating a moment where people feel like, hey, that's me, or oh, that's also what I feel, or oh, that's my problem, or this is where I, uh, this is what I feel every day I wake up. But you cannot know that without talking to your customer. So we come back to the customer talking again, like what do they, um, what do they feel, what do they need, how do they wake up? And if you know the features and the benefits, so the benefits of your partners and the features of your product, then you can use that together in, uh, in your ads. So you need to draw attention, you need to identify on an emotional level, and then you need to um, push the people towards the next step. And what we now see is that I think 90% of the ads is based on people or focused on people that already know what to buy, mm -hmm. already know what kind of things to buy. So th I think 3% is ready to buy. 17% is uh, in um, information gathering mode. So. They are looking towards, they already know the problem, but they're looking for the answer. Mm -hmm. And that's 20% of the whole market is actually looking for you uh, out of themselves. The 80% is not even looking at you. Mm. So if you would say something generally, then people start just keep scrolling because there's no value for them. Mm. You need to wake them up. And waking them up is a demand generation for B2B. You can also put it in B2C. Mm. Thanks, Doris. Um, but in the month generation for B2C, it really feels like you need to make them aware about possibilities. You need mm. to make them aware about a better life. You need to make them aware about their current habits or the current situation. But if you don't know how to do it, then you need to talk to your customer again to feel like how, what's the hook that I can use in order to engage in that uh, interaction. Mm. Um, because the 80%, that's where the, the real value is. And all the companies, all your competitors are fighting for that 20% of the market. Mm. Every shopping campaign or every co collection or carousel campaign you see is all focused on the 3%. People are ready to buy. And if people are ready to buy and you focus on that, they are not brand loyal. They are looking for the best price or the mm. fastest delivery. And then you come to the giants you cannot win from, the Bob.com, the Cool Blues, the Amazons. So the value, um, you need to create that value for your, your customer. Mm. You need to make them awake about the problems in the world. You need them... Um, you draw. You need to draw attention towards what they uh, want to become and how do they want to l succeed in life and how they want to become happy in life. And it really seems like a far away from your bed show because you asked about hands-on. Mm. Actually, this is as, as hands-on as it gets. Find the hook that wakes your audience up with the problems they have and what uh, solutions your product can, can deliver. And then you come from awareness, create the bigger picture. With Plankton, we talk about algae and how algae can improve the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, like omega-3, it's from fish oil. So the industry catches a lot of fish, but omega-3 is actually from algae. So if you cut the middleman, the fish, you save a lot of uh, uh, fishery and you just uh, stick, to the, stick to the core. And in that case, you can enlighten people about this. Mm. You can wake them up like, hey, what are you doing? There's a whole industry, but you, we don't need that. And yeah. that's maybe to wake them up. And then they're looking inter into the interest of algae. Uh, what can it do for me? Then you got the middle layer, the, 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 the health benefits of algae. And then uh, if you have stomach aches or bad skin or you are tired or you have hay fever maybe even. Uh, I saw once a review. And then you can add your algae product towards their needs, their, their mm. um, uh, insecurities or, or whatever. And if they didn't buy it then, then you can ask them for the for the sale. We have a subscription, we have a discount to start, you can try it or whatever. So you've got that whole funnel layered phase. You can actually plot on your own company. What big thing can I talk about to inspire people? Then what can it do for the people? What uh, uh, insecurities or uncertainties do they experience? Mm. And then ask them to, to move forward. And that funnel you can push cross platform from digital out of home to uh, in the end, uh, a meta campaign. So what you're also saying is that uh, some people might have uh, problems or, or facing challenges that, and they're not aware or th that, for example, in, in the case of plankton, that algae might be a solution for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to get people uh, 
try to focus on changing their lives and yeah. and and make and get a smile on their face and get them happy and 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 get them aware of a product that they're not maybe aware of uh, that the, that might bring a solution for example yeah. algae and is it also right that the the 80% you're talking about is is more like is that, is that a more of a preface right so the 20% is, is willing to buy the 80% doesn't know the product yet they're experiencing yep. challenges where they don't have found a solution yet so you need to educate them a bit yep. more and inspire them more um how do they practically do that is that also performance marketing that we're doing or do you see other opportunities there um, performance marketing can help if you have a blue ocean and not enough uh, competitors yet because then people are uh, um, they just see the ad and they feel like hey I'm going to try it hmm. right but if there's already a saturated market with a lot of competitors then it's harder for them because they are going to check where are they going to buy the product and the, the, the formula the larger market formula I read it from Sabri Subi the marketing legend from, uh, from Australia people probably will, uh, will know him and it says, like, I think 60% of the people don't even know they have a problem at all. They're not mm. problem aware. So if a pe person is not problem aware, then you cannot sell them, mm. right? If they don't know you need shoes, then they're not going to a shoe store. Yeah. There, there is no way. But if you educate them about the benefits of shoes, then probably they're like, hey, maybe I need that. Mm. So, okay. And then you got the fast difference of shoes. You got slippers, you got sandals, you got shoes, you got snow boots, whatever. Mm. And then, okay, okay, I know. I think I kind of know which way I want. And then they're answering the 20%, but they're already thinking about buying a shoe. Mm. So imagine the whole area where you can actually grow as a business, uh, getting the word out there about your mission, your vision, what you want to uh, increase in the world, how you become to get more impact, how you became more sustainability, or how you became more sustainable. Um, and as Princess Sneakers, we love working with brands who are willing to make a positive impact. Mm. So we actively help uh, our partners gathering their 60%, not only for the benefit of increasing their revenue, but also because there is the, 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 the type of the market not knowing about new gen solutions. Mm. And if you uh, enable that area of 60%, that's where a big impact and growth are, uh, is. Yeah, what I love about what you're saying is that... Um I once learned uh, a sales methodology, which is called SPIN. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it SPIN stands for the situation, the problem, the implication, and the need. And what I believe that what you're saying is um, by uh, getting people aware of the, the situation that you're in and the potential problems and the implication of it, uh, you, you might create a need. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now thinking about it aloud, then you might use a similar model also in your, your go-to-market, right? So you have to... Um, I also have to think about that that sleeping robot that is now uh, becoming pretty popular, right? Mm -hmm. So sleeping problems have been there, but but a robot was never a solution that people could 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 think of, right? So you have to educate that market and get them. Yeah. And I think looking at that awareness strategy we're talking about is um, um, include other channels as well. So get people aware. What I love about what you're saying is how to understand your your, your customer better and better because the better you understand them, you better you understand who their peers are, who their yeah. influencers are, where they spend time online, offline, how you can find them, influence them, get them aware of that there is something that might change their life uh, and get them towards uh, a more buying intent. So yeah. uh, that's that's really interesting to look at as well. Yeah, and actually it's it's this this seems like all high over and then the national championship kicking doors open, kicking open doors. But actually it is this easy, right? Because in your communication strategy, a lot of uh, parties that of a lot of companies that I see is like we do, we are mm. this. Our product does mm. stop that. Yeah. Nobody cares. Mm. It's uh, I don't care about your product. I care about what it does for me. So ask your customers, your peers, your friends, your family to talk mm. about the product, yeah. not that the influencer strategy or the UGC strategy. What we see now that we higher models or actors saying how AI. good a product is or AI, yeah, <laughs> they can do it too. But it should you should have authenticity, right? You should feel like, okay, I'm buying from honest people. I'm buying a product they believe as well in and I believe them. And I think in a, a situation where social media become less and less believable because everyone can hire someone saying how good the product is. Mm. And I think that's the strength that Plankton does and just look them up because they talk about the heart. They talk about what they believe in. Mm. They can do it way more uh, to the to the whole industry and way more uh, on algae and creating that awareness layer. But I think if you talk about to be able to really inspire people and to get that 60% of the market in, don't talk about your own product, but let 
honest people tell their honest opinion about your honest product mm. and that in the end will do way better than um, you telling how good your product is. And again, for um, small markets, for blue oceans, where there is a new product in the market, performance marketing will work in the top layer. Mm. But I am starting to believe it becomes less and less feasible um, to do performance marketing on an awareness layer because you just need to get your message out there. And performance becomes more and more important, but also harder because of the lack of data. Uh, a lot of companies, I think, uh, 80, 85 percent of the companies are not ready for the first party data changes of Google in Q2. Mm. Uh, they're far from ready. They have no idea who they are, who their audience is. They don't know how the behavior is. They don't know the the um, the lags in the channel of their website or their whole awareness to uh, to retention funnel. So. Um, it, it should start today that they are going to take data seriously and not see data as one or two or three, but see data as information to understand your customer, what they knew, what they need, what they should do, how to bring a smile on their face and include that in your communication strategy because you're not going to win if you don't let other people talk about the honest uh, performance of your product. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting mind shift you're talking about going from product push towards... Uh, well, you call it demand gen for, for B2C, mm -hmm. but understanding your target audience and really know what they're looking for and provide value, whether it's with your product or information yeah. that you can offer or a community community that you build or events that you organize on the side. It's yeah. um it's it's never only about that product yeah. that you're trying to push. Yeah. So and well the the three most important data points of 2024 are definitely your customer data, right? Who is my customer? Mm -hmm. Um, the behavior data, how do my how does my customer behave? We talked about, yeah, someone looks at online, uh, looks at TikTok, then Meta, then talks on WhatsApp, then cycling home, they see this at home next to the sport club, they're interacting with the community, and then in the evening they watch TV. And what are the touch points I should be present? Uh, and where is my audience at? I think that's very important. So you've got customer data, you've got behavior data, but you also got product data. And that's also something a lot of, part of, a lot of companies I see forget. Mm. Because... Product data is probably the least sexy f form of data. It's the amount of fields or information you have on a product page. Mm. But imagine when AI, voice search, becomes imminent. Uh, right now, uh, if I look for a sneakers on uh, of uh, Nike sneakers, I go to Google and I say Nike sneakers, and I will start my journey there. Mm. At some point, I will just grab my phone and say, I'm not going to say it because Siri will come on the, on the podcast as well, but... Mm. Um, um, I'm looking for red Nike shoes, size 42, uh, new worn, uh, limited edition, uh, lowest price. Imagine the, the search query length on Google. So yeah. you need to have that information on your product page because otherwise AI will never find out um, uh, what, uh, what pages to, uh, to, to, to show after that search query. Yeah. So I think it's going to be very important also to get your data, product data right because search queries will be way bigger because voice search will, uh, will hopefully in the next years uh, make its uh, real entrance. It already did a little bit, but mm. just like the QR code, it takes a lot of time to, uh, to really be implemented. But um, I mean, if you don't have the information ready, then you'll probably be too late and the big giants will have it. Yeah, what I found interesting in what you're saying is that well, f well, first of all, the 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 voice experience of the ChatGPT app is is already like uh, so much better than yep. Siri and and all the other ones uh, combined. So uh, I would recommend everyone to try it out and and see how that works. And what you're saying is also, I believe that there is, is going to be an like, auto GPT. There's going to be an auto GPT or like an agent GPT who's going to do the 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 ordering for you. So then it might happen in the future. I'm not sure in which time frame, but in the future that that the people themselves won't be visiting your e-com shop. Mm -hmm. And then looking at, okay, the query that people will do, okay, I want to uh, uh, go look for that product somewhere online and I want it fast and I want it cheap, right? So that's the, I think the, the two first thing mm -hmm. people, especially in the Netherlands, think of. Um, uh, but then what, right? So uh, you have to get them in towards thinking of your brand, I think. So I want that vacuum cleaner, I want a Dyson mm -hmm. and get it wherever you can. I want it to, in my house today. Yeah. I need a vacuum cleaner, Dyson. I need uh, a couch and then brand X. I need, so you have to really be aware of how people are going to navigate yeah. in the future. And I think it's not really in the, it's not going to be this year or the, the, the no. year after, but in the future, it is, hey, Google, order me some extra bread. 
uh, and yeah. and then uh, Flink get your gor- gorillas will deliver it within ten no, minutes. No, I think that that part of the AI about that the AI will think about what kind of bread you want. That's maybe a couple of years uh, to go. Yeah. But it, voice search becomes more and more popular, mm. and I think. Um, you need the basic information on your product page because there probably are some companies now listening or watching and they have 100 million SKUs. Hmm. Well, I think you start should start improving your product data today, right? If you have yeah. 10 products, then of course you're very flexible. But if you're a big guy and you have a lot of SKUs, then you probably should start somewhere this uh, this period because you want to be uh, an innovator at that point. Hmm. Because if you are good with your product data and voice search becomes a big part, then if you are there on the top, then probably that's a good place from to start, but also to uh, to improve. You have a very big competitive edge uh, mm. starting there. So, yeah, what I what I said, the three parts of the three main uh, data points, it's not server-side tracking or, or the data in the campaigns. It's For me, it's cu- customer data. Who is my customer? What do they want? Mm. Their behavior, where are they? How are they moving? When are they buying? When are they opening emails? I can't stand the fact that 90% of companies still send 100,000 emails at the same time a day. Mm. There are algorithms and that know... all people the same email. That's yeah. Also. I mean, I mean, and there are there are software where you can, uh, based on the timing when people open their mail regularly, send the email then. Mm. So if, if if I open my email every day at 9 or 9, then please don't send me an email at 5, uh, 5 p.m. Mm. Because I'm not opening that. So you can increase the, increase the open rate. As well, and what we did also with one of our partners in, in car parts is uh, relevancy is key because I don't know when um, um, my car is broken or someone else's car is broken. Mm. Also, when maybe if with a with a phone lap or something, right? They don't know or the fixables. They don't know when the um, um, their mobile is broken. Yeah, but you can understand uh, when uh, to become relevant. So what we did with the car parts is uh, including the RD RDW database about um, the car. Uh, types the car models and the 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 APK, APK dat, uh, date, which is the the date where you need to uh, to check up on your car. So if I know of my whole audience or my whole uh, x amount of uh, of emails when they need to check their car, then maybe I can show them the five common mistakes of that car uh, and uh, and offer products for it, mm. which may that may uh, um, which makes sure that now I became relevant in my email. Mm. So I didn't send one email to all those people at the same time with the relevant products. Mm. No, I sent a specific email to a specific person with a specific car, with a specific um, offer on a specific yeah. time, because I know that time is the most relevant time. Yeah. So one of the biggest trends this year is relevancy. How yeah. do I become relevant for my audience? Yeah. And you need data for it, and not the one and two on Meta and Facebook, but who is my customer, how do they behave, and what kind of products should I uh, should I offer, and that's why the product data is also important, not only because of AI and voice search, but I need to know what um, kind, what are the characteristics of my product, because if I found the behavior of my customer mm. and I found the values of my product, then I can combine them dynamically. But if I don't have the product information, I can never offer dynamically the product to the customer's needs. So I that's why know. these yeah. three things are the most important. Uh, most important for companies to grow and be on top of the relevancy game. Nice. Yeah, and and I could think of one maybe to add, but it's probably within the customer data, is the market data as well. So John Lynn was a guest yeah. here recently in the pod, and we were talking about this, this trend in platforms, and uh, he was also explaining that 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 bigger companies are working together with these platforms. You just look at uh, search volume, uh, look at trends, and and based on that, they do their product innovation. So. Yeah. It's not. Uh, I've got feeling that this product will will be a success, and people mm-hmm. are really wanting this product. Now they do it really data driven. So based on the market, they introduce new products. And yeah. and uh, what's a similar game? I think Albert Heijn can play with with uh, all their white label products they're they're pushing right now. Yeah, and definitely. They they have all that data available. So this, that might be something to consider as well. So all right. So we've been talking about uh, awareness of the brand. Um, now we're getting potential customers to our our platform our website uh it's in this case our own plan so yeah. what what if, where do we go from there so we got a cookie pop-up we got maybe chat so how yeah. do we organize that we got people excited to buy a product yeah well then um then again i go to the offline experience first right because you come into the store and uh, now instead of uh, my eyes closed my eyes are open so i see that a guy with the puma clothes is in 
So this is a returning customer coming to my website. So I know he wears Puma, so why should I um, show other brands? Right? So personalize your website to interact with a person of previous interest. Do you that, mean that, for example, you've been you you get that person in via a Puma ad, and ideally you show a Puma ad there in a dynamic website? Yeah, as well? for instance, for instance, or someone is logged in on the website, and because of the logged in and the past experience, you don't show the current homepage, but you show a mm. Puma homepage. Mm. Hey, Thomas, welcome back. Uh, here's a new collection of Puma shoes. Mm. That's immediately the personalization you're looking for. Research showed that 80% of the market of the customers in the market um, are willing to give away information to be incentivized. So mm. I tell uh, I tell you information about me, about what shoes I like, how many times I purchase shoes, uh, and I get uh, from you maybe discount on my next purchase or maybe uh, an extra shoe polish free because that adds value, right? Discount doesn't add value, but shoe polish to to get your sho shoes clean does. Mm. Um, and it becomes you you become a little bit more loyal. So in that case, I think it's very important to add the information you have on your customer to your homepage. And you can do that via an ad, personalized ad, based on your history and the personalized website, mm. but also uh, create a landing page experience based on someone's previous uh, interactions. Mm. But that only can you do for returning customers, right? Because you don't have the information yet on new customers. So what a lot of uh, what you see about a lot of websites, Energy Spiders does it for uh, energy and gas uh, supplements. Uh, Vita Kruid, for instance, does it with uh, with the uh, medicine and with the vitamins. There is a simple quiz or test. Get to know your customer. Mm. So answer these five or ten questions, and then you have uh, personalized recommendations, yeah. which is working immensely good because uh, first the customer feels that you're interested in them. Yeah. Uh, you listen to the questions, and for us it's data, so that's good. Then you offer a personalized experience. They mm. don't have to look on your 100,000 products anymore because there's. Uh, in, uh, um, uh, imagine you're at the, you want to buy a product and you're in the Albert High and you see all these different brands. I mean, my head goes crazy because I now have to pick in a busy store. I can't. Yeah. Um, but if I had done a test, which online is very good for, because in the store you don't have a person to ask everyone in the store, hey, what uh, what are your uh, what are your needs? So that's the the, the strength of ecom or strength mm. of online, that you can ask those questions and give them a, uh, a good recommendation. And from that moment, you have their email, you have their information, you have a personalized offer, and then you can actually engage with them as you know exactly who that person in the store is. Yeah, I never understood why why I've been uh, booking so many hotels via booking and I, they still always ask me to, to, to put in the filters that what I'm looking for. And I never understood why like, they're so good at it. I think mm -hmm. at least I have a whole team uh, testing that out uh, yeah. forever, right? So why not make a profile? And I just say, okay, I, I'd rather have a three-star hotel with a gym, um, not further away, f like two miles from my location. Just give, give me, a, build a profile. It needs to be sustainable. And well, if you have that profile, show me better results. And I, of course, the infinite scroll and all works like, but... For me, come on, give me just the best options where I'm looking for, and and obviously that hotels can push themselves up yeah. uh, when paying for it. But uh, it's um, yeah, I just want relative, uh, yeah. relevant. I just want relevant information for me, based on the profile. Same goes for YouTube. Just give me, let me rather than having the companies that pay most, they can just make a profile and show mm -hmm. me the ads that I'm looking for because I'm way more willing to 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 click that button and buy a product yeah. if it's super relevant and. Obviously, the algorithm tries to do that in the best possible way. But I think for me, it was super nice to give them information. Say, like, yeah. hey, this is the stuff that I really like, you know? So show me more of that because uh, I'm interested in that yeah. stuff. So that's that's a good advice. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I, I recently learned that the retention rate within hotels is, uh, is less than 20% averagely. So mm. there's a very low retention rate. So that means probably that people don't go to the same hotel often. Mm. Maybe that helps that they don't want to share, uh, sh show the things that you're interested in because it's more of the same. Um, and I also I, th I think their their personalization of booking is very good, but maybe we don't even know it yet. We don't even know it. Probably. So, so I, I yeah, this is all speculation, of course. But I feel like their um, the offer of the hotels is of course where they make the most margin of because they have their their, their strategy is yeah. uh, creating the best value and margin for themselves. So they want to push the hotels with the best best margin. Uh, but also, I think 
Um, it's it's super personalized, but I think we don't even know it. We don't even see the difference. But, I, it, but is it is it that they're looking for the highest margin and what is best for their business? Or are they trying to do what's best for me? Because also if I if I use Uber Eats, for example, if we're working late on the office, it always takes me a half an hour to order. And it's not because I don't know what I like, but mm -hmm. it's just it's the, the process that is um they know that I like Asian food, yeah. right? So just give me some Asian yeah. and, and I'll just press a button and it's fine, right? I'm not that, yeah. uh, I don't have to cook myself, so I'm, I'm happy anyway. So uh, it just just the process that that is, uh, I believe that it can be way more personalized, way more, a, a better experience for, for the, the people themselves rather yeah. than maximizing profit margin and, and uh, YouTube, same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe, and that's also what you're saying in your strategy, like, if you're shifting towards, hey, this is our business margin product that we're pushing towards, you are that person, th that's your life, and we're creating value for you and we're in the best possible yeah. way, then you can really differentiate, I believe. And and uh, well, you can really differentiate yourself from these other companies. You, you should know? send them a message. <laughs> I am yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. Like it's just annoying. Yeah. Like, give me some better. No, I mean, uh, I mean, probably they have a good reason for it because otherwise they wouldn't do it. That's I what. Know. That's what I believe. But I, I feel you, and I completely agree. I think um, right now, I think 60, 69 percent of the um, the millennials uh, um, um, rather have a personalized experience mm. than a not personalized experience. And I think the the, the generation after me. Um, the Gen Y, the uh, Gen Alpha, or or whatever names they call, I think there will be the the the, the warm personalization will grow and grow. So I think one one moment the big uh, the big giants will also need to create. They're not going to show you thirty hotels. They're going to show you two or three, mm. and they're going to tell you why they why they chose them. And then all the all the tension of you needing having to choose uh, between all those hotels will be gone. It will be a fun experience. So yeah. I think uh, that's also something that Moonback does or Time to Mono. Uh, partner we used to uh we used to help and um i mean they really make it they they draw more value so they talk about the the, the city they talk about fun things to do they talk about sustainable travel right they're talking about all the things that are included within a journey to a hotel and i feel like that's where the uh in the end the the value should be so yeah their goal is not to get like a booking for a hotel their goal is to, to make your trip Yes. amazing right yeah. so and, and everything yeah. they can think of to help you yeah. to have an and amazing experience trip. Uh, and I believe that that's really the way to go forward. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, we got them on a platform. Yep. We inspired them with, with with relevant content at the right time, and and, and they become a fan. And uh, once they they did the first transaction, what happens next, right? So we're often talk about customer data platforms, CRMs, yep. and what is your vision on on uh, getting these customers loyal? Yeah. Um. One thing that stands out for me is creating the wow moment. Um, and creating the wow moment is could be easy because your product just fits or it's really nice and they, they come at home and they use the product and they wow, this is great. Uh, but most of the times uh, it's not that obvious and companies don't know what that wow moment is or when it happens. Mm. Right? Uh, what's the wow moment when you buy a TV? Probably when the first time you click on uh, power, uh, power On and you see the amazing quality on National Geographic, you feel like, wow, this is... This is mm. amazing. Then you know that's the moment. But I think in very, a lot of transactional e-commerce stores uh, or maybe a little bit branded e-commerce stores, they have no idea what their wow moment is. Mm. Uh, and that should, that should be your goal. Find that wow moment because that's the moment where you should be present with the next step. Because mm. people feel like, oh, this is amazing. And if you're then at that moment with an ad, with an email, with a WhatsApp, Maybe a, a hidden leaflet in the box of a next thing they can do to to in, enhance or increase the experience. I feel like that's the that's the journey towards loyalty. And um, so so yeah, I think creating that wow moment. Uh, first, creating the wow moment, and secondly, knowing when it is, and then thirdly, uh, make sure um, you communicate after what they they found it. Yeah, and then I often think e-commerce brands are they sell the product and then they're pushing so uh, so much to to sell another product yeah. or something something else rather than I think what you're saying is that first experience has a lot of influence on uh, on the retention yeah similar to to when uh, looking at sprints and sneakers for example there's research that the onboarding of new employees is super important for the retention yeah right, to maintain to retain them 
And um, I think it's similar with uh, with new new customers that first experience and what you're looking for. It could be the box that is delivered and the way that it's delivered. You open up the box. Yeah. Recently, I did a post about the the, the iPhone case. Yeah, had it has that experience where it goes over very slow, right? You're yeah, like waiting. It, oh. Yeah. That, that friction that you yeah, have yeah. and oh, and and 85 percent of people doesn't throw away their, their iphone box which no. is which is crazy right so <laughs> that wow experience where they invested so much in it really contribute i think to to doing another purchase yeah. i know that's really i think an underestimated piece of of definitely, attention definitely um and and having that wow so so people get a fan of the the, the brand and and yeah. are willing to go back i sincerely believe that if you know what the wow moment of your customer is and you optimize that wow moment you don't need emails after three months giving them discount mm. they will come to you i sincerely believe that for instance for supplements if you have a supplement brand and you have a subscription model then please don't send a gray box to your first purchase of your membership it should be an experience mm. you should hire a choir uh, singing uh, next to the person when he sits on the table and opening that box like ah! Right? <laughs> actually you should create something like that and yeah. feel like wow this is amazing wow all yeah. information and next steps and videos and podcasts and wow can I join a community yeah. oh now I'm in a uh, Instagram threads group with all kinds of same people like me oh mm. I feel heard and they will come back <laughs> yeah, and I know. Yeah. I, I like half a year ago, or maybe a bit longer. I started with Athletic Greens. Yeah, and they have such an amazing experience. Like, it's already the brand is, is they do really well. I think. Yeah. But also, if you receive your, if you're starting to receive your first package already, they the emails that they send and the message you get, it gets you very excited, right? Yeah. It's not like a regular order that you have, but they get you really excited about the product. And then also, when you open the box, it's really proper branded and it's really yeah. nice. And that thing. Like Lily is very clean and, and and tidy in our house, but that thing is is right there in the corner, right? Just this you can see it all the time. So yeah. that's and that that's what I think uh, you're looking for. Yeah, create such an experience that yeah. uh, that you're yeah, you don't have to receive an email. I also believe that there are external triggers and internal triggers. Yeah, where the external triggers are an email or WhatsApp. Of the internal triggers are that 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 emotional change that you have when opening having that first product yes. experience. And that brings you back to ordering another yeah. time. And you need it both, right? So you, you don't, you need that wow moment. You need to make a big moment out of it. Uh, and you also need emails too, because our attention span is like a goldfish. So we need, we need to have um, uh, reminders. But then you can, instead of saying, hey, we, uh, we miss you. Here is a 20% discount. You can add value. Mm. So, hey, you have had that wow moment. Amazing. This is all the things we can do more to increase your life. Or these yeah. are the five things our community brings a smile on their face. Uh, you want to try too? And the, this is way more value than giving discounts. And I, I think if you stay stick with discounts, also within, for instance, uh, I just um, I chat with, my, with a partner of mine is that they give 20, 10% discount on a newsletter opt-in. Mm. Are those loyal people? Probably not because they just want to have the discount. Yeah. I actually actively search for discount. I've never paid a full <laughs> price on my HelloFresh box. Yeah. I never. Yeah. If it's the, the regular price, I'm, I'm, I, I won't buy it. Um, so the 10% discount, we actually want to remove it. But then you have a lot of leads missing. So what you can also do in the checkout, Cool Blue does it for instance, is that in the checkout you can uh, include the I want to have newsletters with everyone opt out. Mm. But they say if you include the newsletter, you'll get a 5% um, uh, store credit mm. for your next purchase. Yeah, it's the Love same that. money that you give away, maybe even less on the next but purchase. You don't offer a discount because discounts not emotional. I don't have it yet, mm. but a store credit I already have it yet, so I can lose it. Mm. So a loss aversion is way more important yeah. because I can lose the five years. If you have, uh, if you uh, had your birthday and you get like ten different store credit cards, at some point you don't know what to do with it. You're gonna buy things you don't need. Because well, you got the you got still got the card, so you're afraid of losing that value. Yeah. So love it. And also, so in in the checkout, what Cool Blue does very well is they not only get the newsletter when some uh, actually people wanted to buy, so they're more of qualitative, mm. and they give store credit for the next purchase. So the the chances of the first or second purchase is more important. And the real heroes would only do it with people uh, being in the, the first time in the checkout. 
mm. because if you uh, only show it in the people that are first time in your checkout, then you give the five euro discount, but you don't want to do it uh, on people that come back regularly, uh, regularly to your shop because then you have to give five euro discount every time, which yeah. has a imp- <coughs> which has an influence on your margin. Uh, yeah, but I, I do believe that that there should be because often these brands are very focused on getting new clients yeah. in and I forget about that. So I had that experience with Ziggo once where I went to their website and based on my IP, you could see that I was, a, I was already a, a customer. The, but then I went in a incognito, how do you say in English? Yeah. Uh, in, in incognito mode. Private and mode. In a private, uh, then I went there in a private mode and I could see a three-month 50% discount. I was yeah. like, what the? And I give them a call. <laughs> The sales guy that I am saying like, hey guys, what the hell? You know, it's like I'm being a loyal co- client uh, customer for many years, and it's, I think yes, you should offer them the five five euros credit for the next purchase, but please don't also do not forget yeah. your loyal customers. And when you said call your clients, and and uh, what you also said is that your most loyal uh, customers, please. Uh, treat them well. Yeah, right? include them in a uh, test panel. Give them the new uh, give them new ne- products yeah, because they test, are your yeah. ambassadors, right? So they will yes. give you the information. And what I also also believe is, uh, I'll stick with the with the with the, the car parts. But every th- every this is a very nice example of being there where your customers are. So mm. I would recommend that uh, recommend businesses to think about their own specific example. But where are people that buy car parts normally in their house? Probably the garage, right? Because they're fixing their car. Yeah. So where should that brand be in their house? Mm. Probably in the garage. How can a car part web shop be in the garage all the time? Mm. Well, maybe a um, um, a towel with their brand to clo- to clean their hands mm. because they're dirty, or maybe a toolkit with uh, branded with the colors. So every time that person is in their garage, they see the brand. Mm. And if the car is broken, the brand is top of mind. Yeah. So, and Not this that. is how you can, um, 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 this is how you can um, say thanks to your cu- customers not to give them the five euro discount, but give them extra tools, extra uh, presents with your brand on it, because mm. they then they become the ambassador. They get a free gift without they even know it. They're happy, and you're there in the um, area in their home where they are actually doing the thing that you sell. Mm. So this is for every company, there is an example that you can find on where is my customer on what times a day and how can I be there at that moment? Because this is the biggest free um, um, yeah, awareness which you can find. Yeah, I love it. All right, so uh, this is amazing. This was amazing. Uh, let's wrap it up with the final question. and. So what is the one thing you see many e-com brands miss out on? So what is the one opportunity, you, you, one or the, the biggest failure or missed opportunity that you see with many e-com brands? Yeah, then if, uh, and to, to, to go into depth about this uh, podcast is, is really insight. So who is my customer? Mm. Uh, and what do they do? What do they need? What do they believe in? Um, and be there where when they are thinking about you. So if you don't know who your customer is, then how can you run ads? How can you get on content? How how should you write your website? You can write your website whole inspirational. You can write your website very functional. Mm. If you don't know your audience, then how do you know how to who to write for? So you should know who your audience is. Ask them, tell, uh, um, call them, uh, survey them. Uh, you can also do a viral giveaway. What we did with the uh, vacancy filing it. You can win to Disney. And uh, a lot of people uh, of current uh, members uh, uh, joined and they could um, like the page, they could leave a review, but also we asked what should vacancy filing improve? Yeah. And I think more than 11,000 people commented. I used that case yesterday where about 12,000 people that, yeah. g- that shared yeah. information about exactly. the platform, how to use yeah. the products. And one S- of the things that so came out of there, it says, if I win two auctions at the same night, can I not only pay one admin cost? So if if you the winners, you only pay one time admin cost, so they probably will win more, so they will bid more, so the value of all the bids will probably increase, mm. and there will be a lot more a higher AOV. So mm. the engagement and loyalty of the platform, if you win more, then you get more. Mm. It's it was out there, one hundreds of people just ask for that feature, mm. and I found that so inspiring that it's so easy. You just ask them what they want, yeah. and they gave the uh, they gave the answer. And it will get so much more loyalty. So it's that easy 
to get customer data. You don't have to call them if you don't want, send them a WhatsApp if you want, send them an email, incentivize them, ask your most loyal customers to come by your store or by your shop, uh, uh, host a loyalty night with a nice pianist and uh, some bubbles and display your new product and ask people what they want, mm. uh, engage with them. Yeah, or uh, host a viral giveaway and give them a point for their response on your questions. It's, it's that easy. Mm. But uh, if you don't know who you're talking to, then um, uh, you're not going to win from the big giants in uh, 2024 and beyond. Wow, amazing. Amazing one to, uh, to close off. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Um, next time we're going to talk about uh, more impact, uh, more growth of e-com. Uh, it was a pleasure having you here. I think it was an amazing episode. And uh, we'll see each other later today, I guess. So uh, thank you so much, Jeroen. Perfect. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.